Hey everyone, so today we're going to be doing a very beginner friendly Halloween theme scratch animation. So first I'm going to show you the animation we're going to be making and then I'll take you step by step through the project. Okay, so the goal of this animation is just to allow the letters B-O-O, -O, boo, to animate throughout the the animation. And so as well, we're going to have a ghost and candy as well as a jack-o'-lantern that's going to be part of the animation. And for this project, you will have a download that you will use for the backdrop as well as the pumpkin and candy. So to get started, I'll show you how it works first. We just simply click the flag and watch. Yeah, and then when you're ready, you stop it. So as you can see, as the flag is clicked and the animation starts, the letters just get bigger and smaller as well as the candy start to move as well as the ghost shows up and then disappears. So to create this project, first you're gonna log into your Scratch account. You don't have an account, that's okay. You don't need one to make this project. We're just gonna open a whole new Scratch screen. And from here, we're first going to download or upload our backdrop. So to do that, we're going to go to our file in the left-hand corner. We're going to do load from your computer. And it should say beginner scratch Halloween project. Go ahead and open. Replace contents. We're going to say OK. And so now you should see the altered background as well as a candy sprite and a jack-o'-lantern sprite. Okay, so the next steps we're going to add are letters that we're going to animate. It's so going to go to the right-hand corner of your screen, right into the sprite section here. So there should be a little blue cat. We're going to hover over that. It says choose a sprite. Go ahead and click that. We're going to go up to the toolbar right here in the top because they all have a various words here. We're going to go very to the last one that says letters. We're going to select the letter B. That's going to appear in our sprite box. And we're going to do that two more times with the letter O. Let's go back to your sprite. Letters and O. And you can do any letters that you want to. I'm just doing the orange and black because it's very Halloween-y. But you can do whatever you want. And so next, just because we're going to be coding the word boo first, I'm going to move the letters to the beginning of my sprite box. So to do that, I just click and drag it to the front. You don't have to. I just like to do it just to keep it organized. And then next, we're going to be adding our ghost sprite. So go ahead and go back, click choose your sprite. From fantasy, my ghost pops up it's in the second row. Yours might be different. You can also search it, and then we're going to leave our ghost sprite there. Okay, so step number one, I'm going to hide my ghost just by clicking on the little eyeball here just while I arrange my letters. And I want to move them so you can click and drag your letters anywhere on the screen to kind of move them around. I'm going to put mine up top here. I want to move. I might put it up top. There we go. Sometimes scratch is a little funky. There we go. Okay, so that's where my letters are going to be right now. And next, we're going to start coding. So I'm going to go back to select the B. So now it's highlighted in blue. That means it's selected. Go back to my workspace here. And I'm going to begin. So the first step is when flag clicked. Every time the green flag is clicked, that's when my animation is going to start. So to do that, I'm going to go over to the left hand side, the yellow bubble that says events. Go ahead and select that. We're going to drag out the very first block. It says when flag clicked and place it in the workspace. Okay. And next, we want to change our size. So with this animation, the size is going to go bigger and smaller, so it'll increase by 10 and it'll decrease by 10. So by the end of the animation, by the time you stop it, it's going to be significantly bigger than when you started. 
So every time that we start the animation, we want to make sure it's set at 100 or smaller. That way it doesn't go too big. It's off the screen and you can no longer read it. So to do that, we're going to go over to the left hand side of our coding block. We're going to go to the blue coding block that says motion. We're going to slide down or sorry, we're going to go to the purple one that says looks. We're changing the size. I'm getting ahead of myself. Change size or set size to 100. We're going to set the size to 100 so that every time it starts, it's going to set at that, that size, so the size that it's at now. Next, we're going to create a loop, a forever loop. So this loop is going to allow everything, all of the conditions inside the loop to continue as long as the animation is running. So to do that, we're going to go back to our coding bubbles. We're going to go to the orange control. We're going to drag a forever loop right underneath our size. Okay, and this next part is a little bit repetitive, so we're going to drag two of the same two blocks out, set them, and then put them inside of our block. And these next two are going to allow the letters to change size. So we want them, again, to go bigger and to go smaller. So that's what we're going to do next. So still within our orange control, we're going to grab a repeat, and it's going to have a number. Mine has a number 10. So I'm going to drag that out to the side, and I'm going to pull two of them out, just like that. Next, we're going to do our change size by. So go back to our coding block. We're going to go to our purple looks and now change size by. And that one, I'm going to put it right in the mouth of the repeat 10. And then I'm going to put another one right in the mouth of the bottom repeat 10. And so the bottom one, I'm going to change to negative 10. So your code block should look just like this right now. You can also change the size later if you want them to go way bigger or if you want them to cut way, way down and go smaller. But for now, let's start with number 10 and negative 10 and just see what happens. So now I'm gonna lock these two blocks together just simply by dragging one until it locks in. And then I'm gonna take the top one and put it inside the forever loop. And so now we can test this out and see what happens. So go ahead and hit the green flag and just watch what happens. So now our B is moving and animating. That is awesome, yay, okay. Go ahead and hit the red stop sign. And that's all there is to it for our letter animation. Things that's gonna make it extra fun and creative is changing your size. So again, we started at 10 and negative 10, but I invite you and encourage you to make it smaller, make it bigger, and just see what happens when you play around with that. And so for our O's, we're going to do the same code block. We're just going to duplicate and drop the code onto our O's. It's very easy to do. So to get started, we're just going to grab our code block right from the top where it says when flat clicked and your whole code block should move like this. And then we're going to bring it down, hover it over our first O. Once you get over it, let it go. Once you click on that O, your code should be there. And we're going to do that for the second one. So as you're ready, grab it, drag it over. It should be highlighted, then let it go. Go ahead and click it, and it should be there. And so now we're going to test out the entire word of boo, the B-O-O. -O. Hit your green flag, and let's see what happens. Awesome. So it's animating perfectly. Go ahead and hit the red stop sign when you're ready. And next, we're going to code our candy. So our jack-o'-lantern actually doesn't have any code at all. It's just it's just there. Um, we are going to move it. I'm going to move it around, I think, probably like here, somewhere around there. So you can move it anywhere on the screen that you want. But it doesn't have any code, so it's really easy. So next, we're going to go to the candy. And this has pretty short code that we're going to duplicate as well. So to do this, we're going to start with our wind flag clicked. So going back to the left hand side of your screen, find the yellow bubble that says events, and we're going to drag wind flag clicked onto the workspace. Once you have that, we want to set our candy so that it starts at the same place every time our animation begins. And for me, I have my candy set so that it starts with each letter. So that we're going to have three pieces of candy. They're going to start with each letter and then they're going to end up in the jack-o'-lantern. So to do that, we're going to go back to our blue bubble of motion. It's the very first code block. We're going to find go to X. It's going to have a bubble and then Y with a bubble. It's about the fifth one down. So go to X and Y. For my X, I'm going to put in negative 142. 
And for my Y, I'm going to put in 76. And this might change later, especially if your screen size is different or if you have your boo in a different position. Your candy can begin wherever you want it to begin. But just for right now, I'm going to start it at these coordinates. And then next, I want it to wait before it starts to glide down. So to add a weight, we're going to go to our orange control. The very first block is going to be weight. I'm going to drag that out. I'm going to leave it. No, I'm going to change it actually to three seconds for the very first one. And then next, we're going to add the glide. So having it move smoothly from one spot to the other is called a glide. So I'm going to do my glide now. So going back to our code blocks, it's going to be the very first one, blue motion, and I'm going to select glide one second to X and Y. And in my X, I'm going to change that to 123, and to my Y, I'm going to change that to negative 33. Okay, and just a reminder to you that when you're working with the coordinates, because we do have a few coordinates in this project, our X and our Y, our X goes left to right and our y goes up and down and so right now my pumpkin's just kind of hanging out but i know where it's going to go because i already have my coordinates set for my candy so i can easily click on my pumpkin and move it or even type those coordinates in so i can type my x in for negative 142 and i can type my y in for negative 33. Actually, that's my starting place, so I don't, probably don't want to start there. But just as an example, you can also type them in. So going back to the candy, that is all of the code for the candy. So it's very, very easy. So next, what we're going to do, we're going to duplicate the candy two more times. You can also duplicate it as many times if you want. If you want a ton of candy in this project, you can have it. But just for now, I'm having mine just set one piece of candy per letter. And to do that, you're going to hover over your candy. You're going to right click and you're going to see the very first pop up is going to say duplicate. Go ahead and click duplicate. And then we're going to do that one more time. Right click, highlight duplicate, select duplicate. Okay, so when I go to candy two, I want it to wait a little bit longer until it falls. So right now the very first one is going at three. And so I'm going to actually change that to 3.5. My weight and then candy three. I'm going to change my weight to four. So you can have them, again, you can be very creative. This is just a base to start off with. You can have them all moving at the same time. You can have them staggered. You can have them go a long time. So I, again, I invite you to just play around with this and be very creative. It is a very simple project. So you have lots of flexibility with this. Okay, and so now I just kind of want to test it out. So at any time, please test. Let's hit our green flag and see what happens. So my candy's flying all over the place. Okay, so let's hit the stop sign. So I'm going to move my jack-o'-lantern there. And then I'm going to try it again. Perfect. Okay, so now... As I said before, I want my candy to start with different letters. So my first candy is starting on the B, so that's fine. Candy number two is not starting on the B, so I want to move it to the O. And if you touch it, you'll see it highlighting, so you'll know which candy. So that's the right candy. So this one's going to move back there. So I'm going to move it to my O, and then once I move it to my O, there we go, the new coordinates will pop up. So in the very first go to X and Y, I can see that it's negative 17 and my Y is 105. So I'm going to change it there. And then candy three, which is this one here, I want to move there. Now I can see the new coordinates for that. So I'll change my X to 96 and I'll change my Y to 109. Okay, so now I'm going to hit my flag again. Now all of my candies are starting in one position and they're all landing on top of the jack-o'-lantern. So I'm going to hit my stop sign. So that's where I want everything to go for now. And I'm liking it. So now I'm going to add my ghost. So again, we want our ghost to show up, move, and then hide. Because it's Halloween and there's ghosts and they move and hide. So to do that, we're going to go back to our wind flag clicked. 
So going back to our code blocks on the left hand side, we're going to click our yellow events. When flag clicked, we're going to drag that out. Next, we're going to go to our purple looks. We're going to slide pretty much to the bottom of it till we get our show and our hide. So first we're gonna drag out a show, then we're gonna drag a hide and we're gonna leave that on the side, we'll leave that last. Next, we want our ghost to move. You can make it move again however you like. For this project, I am going to show you how to make it glide so that it looks very ghost-like. And to do that, we're gonna go back to our motion. And we're do this time we're gonna go to a random position. So we're gonna do glide one second to random position. And you can change your time. I'm just going to leave it at one for now. And then next, we're going to add a weight because I want it to kind of hang out before it disappears. Or I want it to disappear just right away. So we're going to go to our orange control. Grab a weight. I'm going to leave it at one second. I might change it, but for now, let's do one second. And then I'll have the hide right underneath. So go ahead when you're ready, hit the flag. Perfect, okay. I love the way that looks. I'm gonna keep it there. I'm gonna review each code for each sprite and so that you can check yours to see if it matches and then change anything that you like to customize and to make it more creative and fun for you. So going back to our B, we have our wind flag clicked. Every time our animation begins, we're gonna set the size to 100. We have a forever loop that is going to cont contain our conditions for which everything inside is going to happen until we stop. So it's going to repeat for 10. It'll change the size by 10 and then it'll repeat for 10 again. But this second time around, it'll change the size by negative 10. So making it bigger and smaller. And that code is repeated for both bows. Okay. And so next, we're going to go to our candy spray. So our candy one is going to begin when the flag is clicked. And my coordinates are all beginning in different places. So yours may be the same and it may be different. But underneath our when the flag clicked, it'll be go to X of negative 142, go to Y of 76. Okay. After that, I'm going to have it wait for three seconds. And then it'll glide for one second to X of 123 and Y of negative 33. And that code is also duplicated for the other two candies. And lastly, we have our ghost code. So it again animates when the flag is clicked. First it'll show, so it'll reappear. Then it'll glide for one second to a random position. It'll wait at that position and then it'll hide. All right, so thank you. I hope you have fun with this game. Be creative, and I invite you again to play around with your sizing and your candy locations.